This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. And you're with of Technolust. Yes, and we are back on a hill. We are on the top of a hill. It is 90 degrees oh, here in the San Francisco Bay Area, which Insanely is like... Insanely hot. 40-ish Celsius, I don't know. It's hot. Yeah, it's really hot, surprisingly. And nobody has air conditioning around here. That's kind of how it works in the Bay Area. And I, I know, know some why. of y'all are going to be like, well, in the Bay Area, the temperature is usually around 75, uh, 65 degrees. Well, I don't care. Today, it's like 95. I want some AC. Yes. That's why you tuned in. In fact, we're going to talk about the weather for the next hour, and I figured you no. guys would really enjoy that. How's the weather in your area? Leave us a comment So tell below. me about the drone stuff. What's okay, going on? So, well, last week, and, and as we are in the middle of two different series on Software Defined Radio and drones, yeah. we uh, tried to tackle a couple of those things and revisit what we had done on the mountaintop, ah, Mount Diablo, yes. and we were not successful. Uh, I would say that we were successful in that, the new, um, not the thing on the collinear, the... The counter... Poise? The counterpoise. Sorry, I don't know why I can never remember that. <laughs> the counterpoise really did help. However, our yes. all-up weight exceeded our thrust, and we're going to get into that in the drone series. But essentially, drone to a heavy doesn't fly very good. Oh, no. Yeah, it's okay, though, because we've got a lot of cool stuff in the works to make it all sexy happy time, and Yay! we will revisit that soon. But I thought about this. Um, one of the other problems that was going to come up with our, you know, essentially what we're trying to do is get higher to increase yes. our radio horizon. But right? eventually your battery is going to die. And you got to come down. Yeah, what goes up? Must, yeah. So you can leave it on like a rooftop somewhere, but that's in fact what we're trying to do with uh, this thing that the Department of Defense Advanced Research Project has a thing for uh, uh, this um, drone competition, and one of them is for perch and stare. Cool. The idea to cool. drop your drone on a rooftop and then fire up your signal and intelligence stuff. You know, okay. maybe a pineapple or whatever. Collect yeah. some information. Uh, power down your motors. You know, hang out all day long, and then at the end of the day, fly home. Uh, mm. So that would be good. However, there is not a rooftop 400 feet above us. No, to, there's not. To end on. And no, the, the battery is it's more like 20 minutes. So what do we do? I want something persistent. Okay. Huh? I want something we can pivot into and that we can always see airplanes from hella far away. Okay, huh? that sounds good to me. Well, so that kind of leads me to thinking, well, we've been using ADS-B mm. tracker, uh, the pineapple infusion. Right. So on the Wi-Fi pineapple, we're using this program called Dump 1090, which picks up the ADS-B beacons from the airplanes, and we're able to decode those and see where they are. You which can is see really it on cool. a map inside the pineapple. It. But we actually haven't been even using that web interface, because every time oh. we come out to the field, we don't, we have, don't have internet, internet. access. Yeah. yeah. So where do we have internet access, uh, which is also a place where we should have air conditioning? We don't, uh, we sounds like, I would say our office. Mm, quite comfortable there. Mm. Yes. So what if we could have our software divine radio here on the top of the hill, Okay. but we could just hang out there. <gasps> I love this idea. Sounds pretty easy. All we yeah. need is a network link. And you know what we can do? Antennas. Yes. yes. The Fresnel zone between here and the office is like, there's no obstructions. Oh, and you that's know what great. we have? We have the SSP. What is the SSP? It is the Solar Suitcase Pineapple. Oh, God. <laughs> no, check this out. I'm talking? super excited about oh, this. Oh, God. Is this so, what the scary yeah, thing is? Yeah, Paul and I started building stuff. Hang on. I don't know if you can leave that out here and not get in trouble. No, no, no. no. We can totally, we have permission. The, the park service has said it was okay. Yeah, okay. Um, cool. <laughs> or we're going to leave cool. Paul standing next to it and it'll be fine. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> what we have here is a uh, just Pelican case, kind of suitcasey guy. Yeah. And we have a 10 watt solar panel. Cool. We also have a 14 dBi panel antenna wow. connected to our Atheros radio. Okay. So, this is going to be our long range link. We also have a 9 dBi dipole connected right. to our Realtek, so I don't know, maybe we could also do some, I guess it wouldn't be war driving, <laughs> war sitting around, war, not doing much. War sitting. <laughs> <laughs> war sitting. <laughs> and then we have our coaxial collinear um, that we built a that while, we built back, a while yeah. back. Now, just two segment, okay. but still, you know what, the two segments, it, I, it's I just see, it seems just as fine. Yeah. Yes. yeah, and then inside, ah, check this out, this is pretty cool. Okay. Oh my da -da -da -da. god, that battery, dude. 
Yeah, that's basically a motorcycle. What'd you do? Battery. Pry that? You pried it out of your motorcycle? I took it out of Paul's motorcycle. Paul, oh. I, you're not going to be able to get home tonight, <laughs> if you don't mind. But uh, no, <laughs> this is just a lead acid battery. Okay. And I'm using lead acid rather than the, for example, we have lithium ion batteries yeah. uh, for the pineapple, in fact, that'll run for three days. But yeah. you know what? This runs indefinitely. Oh my gosh. Yes, because this solar charge controller here is taking the energy, the oh. awesome photons coming from that giant battery in the center of our yeah. solar system is beaming down some good juice that's gonna go into this battery. So even at night, the Wi-Fi pineapple will stay alive. Sweet. And uh, yeah, all will be good. And we got our software defined radio here. And then there we go. Everything is all there. Counterpoise oh, and wow. everything's on just an SMA extension. And it looks nice and neat, you know. Like if you are yeah. a hiker you know, and you run across if this, if I walked gonna... across that, I'd just be like, yeah, that's normal. Totally. I mean, you Obviously. know, it's even got a Hack Five sticker. Right. Yeah. Right. Totally normal. Done. Okay. Right? <laughs> so what do you say, all we really have to do is put this in the sun, okay. point it down at the office, All right. and then uh, I believe you've point got some software. Down. I do. And with a Yagi antenna. a Yagi antenna. Yes. Yes. And then we can just go and chill at the office and have network access to here. Oh my god, this here. is amazing. see all the airbus in the sky. I can totally Very be lazy and still track airplanes. Yes, well, is yes. It, I think that is in fact uh, the mantra of the hacker. Yeah, pretty yeah, much. Yes, so let's automate some stuff, let's create some crazy <laughs> network stuff so that we can be lazy. Okay. That's innovation, my friends. Well, let's set it up and go down to the office. Let's do that, that right after this quick break. Mmm, <clears throat> you smell that? It's the smell of a fresh domain. I love the fresh domain. It's so new and invigorating, so much possibility. Fire up that web server because we're about to get creative like brand new from the mines of the domain place where they dig up the domains. It's so great. I love getting a new domain and when I do, when I've got a creative idea, I want to get online fast and I do so over at domain.com. They've got this quick domain discovery system and an easy checkout process so you could have your website up and running in no time. Love the guys over at domain.com. I've told you before how reliable, affordable, easy to use they are, and they're awesome on social media. You can tweet at them and see why it's such a fun place to do business. And get this though, the guys over at domain.com, huge fans of Hack5, they wanna hook you up. So get this, we've got a special coupon code, it's H-A-K-5. Use that at checkout and get an extra 15% off. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Welcome back, and we are, we're doing an entire, another episode, not in studio. No, this is well, we're kind of in studio. office, that's right we're, off the yeah, studio. we're in your office. Yes. This is weird. They'll come in, in my office. This is our goat. So we are, in fact, check this out. This is pretty crazy. I've got this guy pointed out my window. Yeah. And you know what's awesome about that? What? There's nearly nothing in my uh, Fresnel zone. Your line of sight. My line of sight. Yeah. So if I come down here and actually connect, like boom, I'm in my pineapple. Awesome. Pineapple, okay. I am in you. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, that's some great. Uh, so we're connected some, to your all pineapple, all the, all which is way up yep. there on the hill. So potentially we should be able to connect to the ADSB tracker right. and get the map. In fact, that's what I've already done is uh, here in the Pineapple web interface, I've gone ahead and already started the ADSB tracker daemon. So we can already go into list view and see, hey, hey, Yay. we've got airplanes. Awesome. But that's not necessarily what we want. I mean, there is a map view, but yeah. I think there's a cooler program, in fact, Yay. that you found. Yes. Um, I should probably also point out that if you're going to do this, uh, you do have to just make one little modification to your pineapple so that it doesn't, so that your computer, when you connect to it, doesn't try to make it its default gateway so that you're, you can actually stay online. Because yes. I'm actually connected, I have two interfaces. I've got, you know, I'm using an alpha here, mm -hmm. uh, connected to, uh, to, the to the Yagi, and then that's my Wi-Fi link to the pineapple, but I'm also right. using Ethernet to the office network here. and So, so that we'll be able to download Google Maps and yes. things like that. And so the quick little fix there is to just SSH in and nano your, uh, or Vi or whatever, your network, and just comment out these options under interface LAN ah. for gateway and DNS. And then also do the same thing over on DHCP and just comment out these options here for DHCP. Okay, got do it. Do that and then your pineapple will no longer be 
the default way gateway to your connecting clients internet cool. happiness. Cool. Okay. Thing. Yes. So once you've got that squared away, we can then download the program that we found. Right. And so you found this really neat program, Virtual Radar Server. Yeah. Tell me about it. So uh, this basically brings up a nice little Google map that you can use to uh, track airplanes. Awesome. Yay. Well, how? Uh, so I've already got it uh, running here. Walk me through. The, uh, the configuration. Okay, so instead of setting it up with your local local host, you know, your local uh, home address. Right, in fact, that's what we've been doing previously yeah. with some of these uh, airplane tracking at ESP programs is before you run the mapping application, you have to first run a daemon in the background, yes. uh, like what, ADSB Sharp? Yes, exactly. For instance, and then that would collect the packets from your, you know, uh, real tech dongle mm -hmm. your, uh, or whatever software defined radio you're using, and then pipe that as a local host, as a port on local host. Exactly. On, you know, there's no place like home, 127001. So in this case, what we're doing is connecting to the Wi-Fi Pineapple instead, and that is not obviously local host. So we need to add it th to this program. Okay. So you download it, it's just an EXE file, and then you go through all the setup, uh, leave the default port as port 80, and then you will change the port for your Wi-Fi Pineapple when you actually go into your tools and options. Right, and when you say leave the default port as port 80, so it's actually running as a web server on yes. your computer. Yeah. So again, it's opening a local port, but that's pretty cool because it's a web app. Right? Exactly. So this is the front end to the web app. And how do we go ahead and uh, add our pineapple? OK, so if you want to add a new one, you go to Tools and mm -hmm. go down to Options. And down here, you're going to see this data sur sur sources. Under there, you'll see receivers. You'll see a default receiver, but we want to add a new one. So you go down there and you click New. When you click on New, it's going to bring up all this generic data. So okay. you'll change the name to your pineapple, whatever that ends up being. So if I've got like a second Wi-Fi pineapple, oh, right. I just realized. What? We can add as many sources as we want. That's we true. We can have like a whole mesh we network can. of ADSB yeah, sniffing yeah. pineapples. Oh, we totally can. Or if somebody else on the internet like port forwarded or, or set up so that we can connect to their base station, <gasps> we could network all the base stations together. All of the things. I'm sure there's an open directory of base stations, in fact. OK, cool, cool. OK. So back to so it. So we got the Wi-Fi Pineapple 2 as the name. And then you go down to, uh, OK, data source is fine. Connection type is fine. Uh, address. Yes. So you want to change that to your Wi-Fi Pineapple's address. Which for us will be 172.16.42.1. OK, the and then see under port. Mm -hmm. Don't change that. OK. Um, what was the reason that we found out about that port? Well, it turns out, in fact, if I go back over to Putty, I'm actually in my pineapple. We're using dump uh, dump 1090 as the uh, the daemon here on the pineapple. And if you run help, you'll see we issue the tac tac net option, which enables yes. networking, which by default enables all of these other things, like the protocol HTTP, which is local yeah. on the pineapple. But it also uh, uh, sets SBS and the default SBS port for our base station, our default base station port is going to be 30,003. So Yay. we don't even have to change that. We can just leave that to default because if we come back over to this yep. program, that's exactly what it's expecting right here, 30,003. OK, so and since we aren't serial, you don't have to change anything under there. So then you can go down and hit test connection. Right. And it should tell you that it connected successfully. Oh, fantastic. Yay. Okay. And then well, you just hit OK and exit right. out of your options. Well, since we don't need a second one, I'm going to delete that because we already yeah. have one right here. I'm going to hit OK. OK. And we can actually see. So now see you see it under your feed status. Sweet. So it gives you the Wi-Fi pineapple. Mm -hmm. It might not be connected yet if this is your first time putting it on the program. But up at the top, on the top corner, you see a little button that says Take Offline. Right. OK, so or I'm. Or Take Online. Take Online. And so yeah. that online and offline is actually the local web app that's yeah. running on your computer, which I guess you could then, like again, port forward and let other people come and Yay! see what you're able to see. So That'd what we want to cool. do is bring this online once mm -hmm. you have it all connected and ready to go. Okay. And then you hit that little website, the 127.0.0.1 slash virtual radar. There we go. And that's going to bring up the web interface for the map. Oh, hey, look at that. So what oh, happens, hey, who are what you? you should see, yeah, this is perfect. So if it brings you up in the UK or somewhere that you're not currently at, you can go up to the menu button up in the corner and go to options. 
There you go. And then change the current location. So set your I current see. location, use GPS location. So if I set current location, I would check this, set current location, I see I have done just go. that. I have... Point Richmond. Perfect. In fact, it's kind of right there. There we go. Yeah. All right. Close enough. Perfect. Right down at the bottom of the hill. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So once that's all set, you're ready to go. You can refresh your map if you need to, and then you should start seeing airplanes as long as everything was set up correctly. Like this guy that I'm looking there at right go. now, yeah. which is at 10,000 feet. So He's... this is cool. Check this out. So you got a Google map, and you also get a couple of Google pictures of the actual airplane. That is fantastic. That so awesome? it automatically does a Google image search yeah. of the tail number of the aircraft. So cool. So we can see that this is a Delta flight. That's so cool. Hey, check and that it's, out. It's not too hard. Yeah. This was pretty oh, easy wait, to set up. We've got even more on our scope now. Who are you? <gasps> There's another one. Oh, hey, look, it's FedEx and a <laughs> DC 10? DC 9? What is it? That's oh, what? Awesome. It is. It's a DC, well, it's a Donald MD Douglas MD11F. Okay. But yeah, it's the cool one with the third. Um, yeah. This that's is, cool. there's a fun, <laughs> I'm going to get so esoteric, but there's a, a fun story about uh, ETOPS and that. Oh. And so the designation was that you had to have more than two engines to be able to like, cross oh, yeah, the Atlantic yeah. in this certain yep. sort of way. Yep. And I forget what the actual name is, but it, the acronym is ETOPS. But if you ask any airline pilot, they're going to tell you. Engines turn or passengers swim. Oh. So anyway, uh, McDonnell Douglas was really cool and just That's fitted great. a third engine right on the tail wing there. Okay, so cool, there you have it. Cool that is virtual radar and how to set it up with your own Wi-Fi pineapple on a hill. This is fantastic. I'm watching him go so right over cool. San Francisco. <laughs> it's well, so exciting. I love this. This was really cool. I want to hear. And it worked. Yes. yes. I love it when things work. That with was a terrible high five. Okay, with there a couple of caveats though, we should probably point out that you're going to want to make sure that you have permission from your friend's yeah. rooftop that you left your solar powered pineapple suitcase on. Yeah. Right, <laughs> uh, which of course we had. Now, um, with of course. that said, you know, this would work with just about any software defined radio, not oh, just yeah. the $20 Realtek uh, that can only receive and- Oh, it totally would. 25 to 17 megahertz. What if you could, for instance... Oh boy. Uh -huh. Here he goes. Uh -huh. This is what I'm talking about. What if we could start playing <gasps> with an SDR that is capable of doing... Oh my god, that's a brilliant idea. Right, right. Frequency range between 10 megahertz and 6 gigahertz. And look what I just got. Oh. Hack RF. Is that the Hack RF? This is the Hack RF. The, the Osmond Hack RF. This is the, the oh Mike god. Osmond Hack RF. Can I touch RF. it? There you go. You've been blessed. Ow. Yeah, in fact, we've got it over at the hack shop right now. So that's pretty cool. <gasps> it's pretty rad board. It's available for pre-order right now. And um, we're going to be getting into Hey, come what? on now. <laughs> Stop I wasn't eating. looking at it. I just ate There's, it. See, did you like my little pimping of the hack shop right there at the end? It was a good job. That was good. That was good. Uh, HAKshop.com is how you can directly support the show. We should also pimp our feedback. Yes. Feedback at hack5.org if you like what you see here yeah. or you don't. That's cool too. Hey, and would you like to come out and have brunch with us and I check would. out some of these awesome projects oh, that we're working did on? Did you try their pancakes? Yeah. I pancakes. tried the pancakes last, well, they're last time. They're German, so they're amazing. So, so good. <laughs> Oh, well, man. you can find information about our monthly uh, oh, hacker hungry. brunch here in the San Francisco Bay Area. Hack5.org slash brunch. The next one is going to be Sunday, June 8th. Yay! Yay! Ooh, that's a week before my wedding. Oh, wow. There you go. See? Oh, You've boy. got an entire week to propose to Shannon at the hacker brunch. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> uh, God, thanks a lot, Darren. You're welcome. Uh, well, you know what? Uh, you can stay in your nice air conditioning, uh, which we don't have, I'm pretending, uh, <laughs> while I will be in Nia Bay, Washington, soaking <gasps> up camp! the nature for tour camp. Awesome! The d dates for that are July 9th through the 13th, and I encourage everyone to go over to tourcamp.org. Check it out. Uh, we Yay! Have, they do only do it every other year. It's the only hacker camp that I know of at all in the United States. And just imagine camping and hackers. I mean, what more do you want, right? It's A shower. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> no bugs. Well, there are bugs. I just got some off spray. Apparently, that stuff works pretty oh, good. Don't use that. Listen, there's chemicals. And I'm gonna hippie You're out such here a hippie. in a minute. Yes. <laughs> um, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the feedback in the comments what you think, um, and we will continue on next week with uh, Peter is back and some more drone action. Yay! Until then, I'm Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your techno lust. Everybody.
Everybody. Just your tech last. Everybody. Just take the last. Everybody just a Just your tech last. last. Why are we so intense? I don't know why we're intense. I don't know. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs>